Isn't it ironic that decades ago we sent humans to the moon using technology that was far less advanced than what we carry in our pockets today? The Apollo guidance computer, which navigated astronauts to the moon, had less computing power than a modern smartwatch. Yet despite our vast advancements in computing, materials science, and engineering, we are struggling to return. This raises the question, why was it possible then, but so difficult now? One major factor is the shift in priorities. The Apollo program was driven by the Cold War space race, where the U.S. government was willing to invest massive resources to beat the Soviet Union to the moon. Between 1960 and 1973, NASA's budget was at its peak, consuming about 4.5% of the federal budget in 1966. In contrast, today, NASA receives only about 0.4% of the federal budget. While technology has advanced, the funding and urgency that once pushed the Apollo program forward have diminished. NASA's Artemis program, designed to return humans to the moon, has faced numerous delays and cost overruns. The second mission in the program, Artemis II, was originally scheduled for November 2024, but has now been pushed back to April 2026. This delay stems from multiple technical challenges, particularly with the Orion spacecraft's heat shield. During the Artemis I mission in 2022, engineers found that the heat shield experienced unexpected charring and cracking, leading to material loss in over 100 locations. This is concerning because the heat shield is critical for protecting astronauts during re-entry. NASA has spent months investigating the issue and working on solutions, but the added testing and modifications have contributed to delays. Other technical issues have also emerged. The spacecraft's life support system, which is supposed to maintain a breathable atmosphere for astronauts, faced problems in testing. While the system passed tests for Artemis II, it failed during testing for Artemis III, raising concerns about its long-term reliability. The side hatch, which is used for entry and exit, also required further testing to ensure that it could open under various emergency scenarios. Additionally, Orion's emergency batteries, which provide backup power if the spacecraft needs to separate from the rocket, have been found to underperform. Beyond technical issues, cost is also a significant challenge. Each launch of the SLS rocket is estimated to cost around $2 billion making it one of the most expensive launch systems ever developed. The SLS program itself has cost $23.8 billion since 2011, while Orion has added another $2.4 billion since development began in 2006. Ground infrastructure improvements have cost an additional $5.7 billion, bringing total Artemis-related spending to nearly $50 billion by the time Artemis the One launched in 2022. These concerns have fueled discussions about alternative solutions. Some experts believe that SpaceX could provide a more cost-effective and efficient way to return humans to the moon. One of the ideas being considered is modifying SpaceX's Crew Dragon spacecraft, which is currently used for missions to the International Space Station, to support lunar missions. Crew Dragon is significantly more advanced than the Apollo Command Module, featuring a pressurized cabin, modern digital flight software, autonomous docking capabilities, and touchscreen controls. It also has an advanced environmental control and life support system, making it capable of sustaining astronauts for extended periods in space. Compared to the Apollo Command Module, Crew Dragon has about 50% more internal volume, providing more space for astronauts to move and conduct scientific work. If Crew Dragon were to be used for a lunar mission, a Falcon Heavy rocket would launch it into a trajectory toward the moon, where it would enter lunar orbit and dock with a separate lander. The crew would then transfer into the lander, descend to the moon's surface, conduct their mission, and return to Crew Dragon, which would then bring them back to Earth. This approach could significantly reduce costs compared to NASA's Artemis program. However, Crew Dragon is not designed for deep space travel, and modifying it for lunar missions would require overcoming several major challenges. One of the most pressing concerns is radiation exposure. 
In low Earth orbit, where Crew Dragon currently operates, astronauts are protected by the Earth's magnetic field, which shields them from harmful cosmic radiation and solar flares. Once beyond this protective zone, astronauts would be exposed to much higher levels of radiation. Apollo astronauts only spent a few days in deep space, but a modern lunar mission could last two weeks or longer. Crew Dragon would need additional radiation shielding to protect the crew from long-term exposure. Another challenge is life support. Crew Dragon's environmental control and life support system is designed for relatively short missions to and from the International Space Station, lasting a few days at most. A lunar mission would require a more advanced system capable of maintaining oxygen levels, carbon dioxide removal, and humidity control for a much longer period. The spacecraft would also need additional storage for water, food, and waste management. Crew Dragon's propulsion system would also need upgrades. The spacecraft currently relies on Draco thrusters. These are sufficient for maneuvering in low Earth orbit. But a mission to lunar orbit requires a significantly larger Delta V, or velocity change. The spacecraft would either need additional propellant capacity or more powerful engines, such as an upgraded version of SpaceX's Super Draco thrusters, which were originally designed for emergency abort scenarios. Re-entry from the Moon presents another set of challenges. Crew Dragon is designed to return to Earth from low Earth orbit at speeds of about 7.8 kilometers per second. A return from the Moon, however, would involve re-entry speeds exceeding 11 kilometers per second, generating much higher thermal loads. There is also the issue of landing. Crew Dragon currently splashes down in the ocean, relying on parachutes to slow its descent. While this method works well for Earth orbit missions, a lunar mission may require a more precise and controlled landing capability, potentially using retro propulsion for a land-based landing. Given these challenges, some experts argue that instead of modifying Crew Dragon, it would be more practical for SpaceX to develop a dedicated spacecraft specifically designed for lunar exploration. Crew Dragon was built with the International Space Station in mind, and its systems are optimized for short-duration missions in low Earth orbit. A purpose-built lunar spacecraft would allow SpaceX to design for deep space conditions from the start, rather than trying to retrofit an existing vehicle. However, there is an even better option, SpaceX's Starship. Unlike Crew Dragon, which was designed for low Earth orbit missions, or the Orion spacecraft, which requires a separate lander for lunar missions, Starship is built to handle the entire mission from Earth to the Moon and back in a single vehicle. It is a fully reusable, super-heavy lift spacecraft that eliminates the need for multiple launches, complex docking maneuvers, and separate landing systems, making it the most efficient and cost-effective solution for lunar exploration. Starship stands at 50 meters in height with a 9-meter diameter, giving it an internal pressurized volume of 1,100 cubic meters, far larger than the cramped Apollo Lunar Module or Orion spacecraft. This extra space allows for long-duration missions, accommodating astronauts in a comfortable, spacious environment with dedicated living quarters, workstations, and storage for scientific equipment. Unlike previous lunar spacecraft, which could only support short stays on the moon, Starship can keep astronauts on the surface for weeks or even months. The spacecraft is powered by six Raptor engines which run on liquid methane and liquid oxygen. This fuel choice provides higher efficiency and deep throttle capability, allowing precise landings. Unlike the Apollo Lunar Module, which had a separate ascent stage for returning to orbit, Starship can launch from the moon using the same engines, eliminating the need for multiple spacecraft. One of the biggest advantages of Starship is its massive payload capacity. While the Apollo Lunar Module could only carry 500 kilograms of cargo to the moon, Starship can deliver up to 100 metric tons. This means it can transport scientific instruments, lunar habitats, power systems, and rovers, making it the best option for building a permanent lunar base. With this capability, Starship can establish infrastructure on the moon much faster than NASA's Artemis program, which requires multiple launches over several years to achieve the same goal. For a lunar mission, Starship refuels in Earth orbit before heading to the moon. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching.